that we, we can do. We can outfit other, other suits with our seals. All you need is a little bit of soapy water, about 50-50 uh, water soap mix. Uh, spray it on the rings and then spray it in the suit, on the ring in the suit, and you squeeze it together. It's like a Ziploc bag. You'll actually hear an audible click. And when you hear that, you'll be, uh, you'll be uh, sealed tight. Grab the seal, pull it apart. Uh, it'll seat itself nice and, nice and tight inside the suit, and you're ready to dive. You'll never lose a dive as long as you have a second set of seals in your dive bag. I, and the other thing too, the G1 seals come in latex and silicone. Did you say that? I was busy playing. I did. You were busy. <laughs> okay. Well, then we have another feature too. Dry gloves. Now, there's two things when you're dry suit diving that'll make you crazy. You went out and spent a lot of money for a dry suit. You come out of the water and you're like, man, I really don't feel much warmer than I was before. Nine times out of 10, your hands have gotten cold, and that's all you're concentrating on, and it pretty much just travels through your body. You feel colder. Wearing dry gloves will actually keep you warmer your whole body. Now, if you have a problem where, well, my feet are getting cold, it doesn't necessarily mean starting to slap on extra socks in order to warm it up. Nine times out of ten, and I've dealt with this with a number of students, your fin straps are simply too tight. You've compressed this, your, your undergarment that your feet is wrapped around your feet, or you've actually reduced or eliminated the airflow. You do need air to get up to your feet in order to keep them warm, and that's one of the reasons for diving horizontal and keeping your feet slightly elevated. It's not a lot of air, but just enough to puff up your undergarment, you'll feel so much warmer. And then we have boots. We have boots. Um... Going from left to right, you know, those are our rock boots. Um, those boots are probably by far what I put the most on on a set of, on a on a dry suit, because all it does is somebody orders a suit with neoprene socks. It comes with the rock boots, no additional charge. The next one over is our Turbo Tech. This is an upgrade. Uh, this is something that we put Kevlar. Uh, I'm sorry, we have to call it Aramid fiber now. Dupont has uh, corrected us. Um, we put this airmid fiber on the toes and on the heel to create, uh, to make this, the boot much stronger and wear resistant. This is a neoprene sock with a sole on it and the airmid fiber on the heel and on the toes. The next one over, of course, that is our turbo, turbo boot. Uh, one of the things I like about the turbo and the turbo tech is if you like to travel with your suit, these are, in my opinion, your best options. One, they're the lightest weight. Uh, you don't need to bring a second set of boots, but that is always an option you can do. And two, they fold almost completely flat. Uh, so when you fold up your suit, it, it doesn't add a lot of weight, and, it, and you can pack it really tight um, to make it easy to travel with. And the last ones, of course, those are our Ultra Flex boots. Those are actually the boots that I have on my suit. I do most of my diving here locally in San Diego, and we do beach dives. And so walking across the sand, uh, into the water. Sometimes you go to different locations, you might walk across some rocks, but it's really not hardcore rocky shoreline that we dive out here. So these ultra flex boots, they're nice snug, they're like a dive booty. Um, so they hold your foot. I don't have to wear a really thick insulation when I dive with that boot because that boot does keep my foot warm and um, it does fit into my regular fins as if I'm diving wet or if I'm diving dry. So I don't have to buy a second set of fins uh, for my dry suit because I dive these boots. They tend to be a little bit more narrow. Uh, so somebody who has a wider foot needs to be aware of that. Uh, a couple of more points on the boots too. A lot of public safety divers tend to go with the rock boots because a lot of times they're actually sharing their, uh, their suits from one to another, but they might have a different foot, foot size and they're able just to carry a spare set of boots in order to slide on at this point. Some people, they like to have the Neo sock and they'll actually like uh, Jack who works with us, Jack Durr, actually wears a pair of white Keds or Converse sneakers. Converse. Converse on his to make it, you know, just something a little bit unique. The, uh, I'm also using the Ultra Flex boot. I'm a photographer and I like the ability to move my ankles a little bit, a little bit of sculling, 
fine positioning at that point because they're trying to be neutrally buoyant. I also like it because it's a truer cut. I got a size 10 foot, an extra large boot on my suit. I don't have to wear, wear, wear really thick undergarments in order to keep my feet warm. And another feature that you'll see out of all three of the four, it actually has a strap around the ankle. And what that does is you can snug that down to really reduce the airflow. So you don't have a lot of air moving up into the boot, particularly when you're first getting started. You'll find that might be a little uncomfortable. The air shift is relatively quickly, particularly if you're overweighted. Your boots will fill up. And, and the problem is, is when your boots fill up with air, it can actually pop your fins off at this point. You'll, you'll lose a fin and you'll feel uncomfortable. If you wind up using that ankle strap, it'll keep the, your foot in position in the boot and make it easier to work with the fin. And you'll fine tune these things as you start diving, diving often, diving a lot. You'll, you'll, you'll pick up on it, okay? Now this section is intended for the mature audience. P-valves, it is an option. And we don't have to get into detail, but the, the function is so that you basically don't have to take your suit off so that you can relieve yourself. And yes, they have a feature called a sheepy to take care of the ladies also. And we won't get into detail there either. You can hit me privately if you want. But we have the one that says DUI. That's actually from Light Monkey. The opposite one obviously is from OMS. The difference on the OMS one, you can actually take the inner working parts out and as you see on the right in the loop there, there's actually a plug you can put inside. So if you don't want to wear your P-valve the whole time, you can actually take it apart and just put the plug back in and go diving. And, and one guy in Germany told us, yeah, I just take mine and clean it by putting it in the dishwasher. I'm not planning on going there to dinner. So, and then... We have something else too, because this is an individual sport and we want to work as individuals. So we now have an app on our website. Now it only works with the TLS 350, but the big thing here is you can see your colors and, and I, gee, coincidentally happened to pick up Tor's color of his suit, olive drab. How ordinary. Okay, but you can go on to here. And you could change the color. So why don't you pick why yours, something? Baby. Say again. Why don't you pick yours? Let's, let's well, mine, up mine's coming up, yours. but we can get into something fancy, and we can also change the pattern on the suit. So we'll, we'll yes, he's going to call me out. So we'll, I have to find mine. Tiki okay. blue. It's not yeah, tiki blues. That's my suit. I wanted something a little stylish this year, so I went with that. You can also see how your boot is going to look with different type socks, different type boots. So you'll have an idea what your suit looks like. Now, you'll see the pattern. By and large, it really depends on your computer screen, how accurate the color is going to be. But your local dealer will actually have color swatches in there. And you can go on our website. And if you send us an email at the end, we will send you out PDF catalogs of all the product. And there's actually colors on the inside. So you, you have a lot of your, the ability to really individualize your suit to make it the way you want. So let's get rid of this. Keep moving forward. Well, Tor, we pulled that one off. Yeah. Okay. And the, this one's all you, buddy. So one of the things, DUI, uh, one of the things that makes us uh, so good at what we do, we do 20 measurements of your body from head to toe uh, yeah. to custom fit the suit for you. Uh, this is kind of just the, uh, you know, where the 20 measurements are and it doesn't account for the foot length and the foot width, which is also important, especially if people have larger feet. Um, if somebody has a size 13 foot or larger, we actually do ask for a tracing with the length and the width measurement uh, drawn into the suit. Um, but as you can see, I mean, it, it's, we are very precise on how we measure, where we measure on the body. We work very closely with our dealers to teach them how to properly do it. One of the things I always like to tell people is that you're, you, know, you make a big investment in a dry suit. If you do a signature suit, which is what we call our custom made to measure suits, DUI guarantees fit. 
So we will work with you and your dealer to make sure that suit fits you the way you want it to fit and you're happy with it. As you can see, Pete just popped up our order form for our fabric dry suits, our premium fabric dry suits. These are our TLS, our Flex Extreme, and our CLX 450. These are by far our most popular suits, the TLS 350 and the FLX Extreme by far outsell every other suit that we, that we put on the market. Um, as you can see, you know, there's a lot of information and the actual order form now has even a second page, which is a backside. But we also have an order form for the type of suit that we offer. So this is the order form for our fabric suits that are premium. We also have a different order form for our CF200, which is our crushed neoprene suit. And uh, our standard suits, which is our Yukon 2, our Cortez, and our, our uh, Coronado, which is our opening price point entry level suits. But as you can see, you know, it's real simple. You work with your dealer to go through this form from top to bottom. Uh, every question has to be answered. Otherwise, we go back to your dealer. Uh, so it's, it's very important to us. We know what thickness undergarment you wear. Because if I build a suit for you that you want to go dive in Antarctica, but you ask me to cut it for a thin undergarment, that suit's not going to fit right. Uh, so we want to make sure that it fits the way you want it to fit for the type of diving that you want to do. If you plan on doing really cold water diving, let us size the suit accordingly and not make the suit too tight. You'll see all of our color options on there. We also have the, um, you know, the, the Pro Stripe, the three different overlays, the Pro, the Elite, the Pro Stripe. We offer for 2020 a third stripe. So now you can have three stripes down the arms. And to make it really creative, you can even change the color on all three stripes. You know, a thank you to our friends in Italy who pushed us hard enough to make us do that. Um, so now you have any option that you can think of on these suits. Uh, and you just go through the order form one step at a time and uh, we'll be able to build your suit custom just for you. And what's really important is we pay particular attention to the ladies. You'll look in section two, it says signature series and select male or female. Well, in a, a select suit, which is by and large a stock sized suit, we have 18 different women sizes that we can work with and 15 different men sizes. So you walk into your dealer, they have a list. They only really need to take five measurements and see how close you are to get into a select suit and save you roughly $400 as opposed to do a signature series suit. But you're making a big investment in the suit and you really want to have something that's going to fit right. If, if it's too short, it's horrible. If it's too long, it's really uncomfortable to make the dive. So it's not all about colors. It's really all about fit and it's all about you. And that's why you want to do everything with a local dealer because they are trained to fit you and work with it. And if they have a problem, they know who to call to help them out. And you can also tap us on stuff I do and Tor does it too at all the trade shows. We measure a lot of people. I, I've, I can't tell you how many people I've actually measured at Dutch Springs standing right on the beach. So it's, it's all about getting it fit to the individual. So let's start talking about some of the individual suits. And of course, we're starting with mine because I put the program together. All right. The TLS 350. It is one of the most, the most popular selling suit that DUI has put together. As you see, it's lightweight. It dries quickly. Very flexible. Every to swim in, I occasionally bounce back and forth on the coasts. My diving can be anywhere from ice diving to cave diving in Florida to deep wreck diving off of Florida. I want something that's going to dry very, very quickly and has a basically some abrasion resistance. I really stay off my knees. I'm, I'm very careful about that, and I'm sure you all too, okay? It's a popular suit with the armed forces, the rescue swimmers, and the big thing on these suits, it comes with a seven-year warranty on the seams. So the suit's going to extend. And as you can see, mine's a really good looking suit because then we have Tor. So mine is the FLX Extreme. It's also a really good looking suit, if you ask me. Um, and it is, uh, I was one of the first people to actually do the two stripes down the sleeve, as you can see in the picture. Mine's made of polyester, so a polyester trilaminate soft, flexible. It is a little bit more heavy duty than the TLS uh, 350. 
Uh, it's also, uh, if you could see in the picture, it's, it's not quite as shiny because of the nylon that the TLS has. Uh, that is something that's purely cosmetic. Uh, some people like the shiny look, other people like the matted look. I honestly like the matted look, so I chose this one. I don't travel a lot with my suit. When I travel to dive, I go to warm water locations. So for me, having this suit, uh, the FLX Extreme, diving locally in California, uh, uh, up and down the coast, all the way from Monterey down to San Diego, you know, and even parts of Mexico, this is a great suit because the only thing I got to do is carry it to the shore or carry it to the boat. It is more puncture resistant and uh, tear resistant than the uh, TLS 350. And it comes standard with our Cordura knee overlays. The TLS 350 comes standard with a second layer of TLS 350 material on the knees. This is an upgrade. So with this, you don't have to get knee pads you, if you don't spend a lot of time kneeling down on the bottom of the ocean because it already has a nice heavy duty layer, uh, secondary layer on the knees. Uh, again, this is a premium suit, seven year warranty on the seams and uh, on the material and the workmanship. So, and this is an unconditional seven year warranty, which means, you know, if you send the suit two into us after six and a half years and, this, and, and, and the seams are coming apart, we fix the seam. We don't ask you for a service history of your suit. We track everything by serial number. So we will take care of that suit as long as it's within the seven years. If you want to really extend the life of any dry suit made, the, the worst thing for the seals and for the material is direct sunlight. Always dry your suit in the shade. And when you're working with your zip seals or any kind of latex seal, any seal, put some lubrication on it. Even cornstarch will, will basically protect the material at that point. Ultraviolet lighting is the worst thing on the suit. And then we'll move in as we move up. Now, with these suits, when you're looking at it, it's a Kodura blend suit on the CLX 450. You can see what's written here. But here's the difference. As you move up in the line, there is always a trade-off. More flexibility means less abrasion resistance and vice versa. So if you're really hard on your suit, you're diving in an area where you're calling course jetties, calling course rocks, that's where you have to start looking at where do I need to protect my suit. If you're the type of person that likes to use a scooter a lot, we make a crotch pad to protect it so that the, your crotch strap isn't rubbing its way through your dry suit. And, and we can guide you with this and answer all your questions on the suit. So you really, it's not just the color and everything involved. It's what are you doing with your suit so that we can give you the longest lasting possible suit. And now we have the creme de la creme, the CF200. This is a crushed neoprene suit. This suit has a great story to it. On our website, you go to the front page, you scroll down, you can go to our YouTube video. Dick Long gives a, and he's the president standing right there, gives a great presentation on how all this came to be. And he shared some more information with us, but a couple of things with this material. It does stretch. It's super durable. He even said the day he took it out, we'll show you the process they use. He said it was really difficult to cut with the scissor, but it's still stretched. So it was really strong. It actually has its own insulating value. The other suits we talked about, that's a thin, it's, it's tri-lam, but it's not thick enough to give you any sort of insulation. The way a dry suit works, your dry suit keeps your undergarment warm. That's the function. With the CF200, the material, it's actually wetsuit material, will actually keep you warmer, but you do have the drawback on this. It's really heavy. This is not the suit, if you're bouncing around the country, this is not the suit you want, and it's really slow to dry. It usually takes a day and a half to two days, depending on where you are, to really dry it. And, and by the way, why is weight so important? Well, you all know about that 50-pound weight getting on the plane. Well, if your dry suit just went from 12 pounds to 18, it could put you overweight. So what are we looking at? Well, here's the system that he actually used and refined it. This is actually torpedo tubes that he got secondhand, and, and Dick's done a lot with them. And it's truly crushed neoprene. They start with 3 16 inch wetsuit material. They put it in the crusher. They fill it to 1,500. They, they fill it with water. They pump it up to 1,500 PSI. And it stays there 
for 24 hours. And what it does is it now squeezes out all the gas, all those little bubbles in the neoprene get squeezed out. And, and when you open it up, I haven't seen it myself because I'm too far away, but he says it looks milky because it's just full of the gas that came out of the suit. And it shrinks down from 3 sixteenths down to 1 sixteenth of an inch. It's the most durable suit DUI has ever made. I am always running into people at trade shows. Yeah, I got a DUI. I bought it 20 years ago. It's a CF 200, and I dive it all the time. The biggest problem they have, they fade because they left them hanging out in the sun. So that's that's our creme de la creme. And I and I want to see if I can I can back up here because there is something. Oh, okay, that'll work. Okay, behind Dick, Dick Long was instrumental in sinking that wreck off of San Diego. That's the Yukon that you hear about on occasion. And Dick championed this, set it up. They got it in the water. It took them years to make it all happen. Hundreds of thousands of dollars working with Dick. And that, that's his pride and joy was getting that wreck in there. And he's actually worked with other countries in getting their wrecks down. So if you ever get to San Diego, this is a must dive. It's in 100 feet of water. Unfortunately, it's laying on its side. But, you know, you're from the Northeast. What do you care? The U.S. of San Diego is upside down. Deal with it. <laughs> so, Tor, it's all you. Uh, right there, uh, next one you'll see is our Yukon 2. Our Yukon 2 is, uh, has actually become one of our best selling suits. It is a trilaminate, it's a nylon based trilaminate. It is front entry. It comes with a plastic zipper. We use the YKK Aqua Seal zipper. It is, it is standard with uh, zip seals, wrist and neck, but the uh, neck is only the G2. It's only available in latex. This suit was created, it comes out of the box ready to dive. You basically get three options, uh, well, four options. You get to tell us what size boots you want, um, but you don't get to tell us what kind of boots you want. You get to tell us if you want it red, black, or gray. Those are your only options on this suit but it comes out of the box, ready to dive, uh, just like way you see it, one cargo pocket on the right-hand side. Of course, apex valves, because we don't, we don't go uh, changing up our valves just because the suit is a little bit uh, lower priced. This one is also available in 18 sizes for women, 15 sizes for men, and uh, pure, uh, all together made to measure. Uh, so we can custom make this suit as well. Um, one of the things to remember about the suit, it only has a three-year warranty. Why? Because we tape these suits. This, the industry standard that we've seen across the board from almost all of our competitors is that the heat seam, uh, heat seal tape, uh, tape the seams. Ours, when you look at our Yukon 2, our Cortez, and our Coronado, which are three opening price point suits, these are suits that we do, uh, we tape the seams, we give them a three year warranty. We actually go above and beyond what a lot of our competitors do when it comes to taping the seams because we don't just heat tape them. We actually spend time prepping the surface uh, where the tape is gonna adhere to make it a better bond for the suits. So there's limited options with this suit, but you can still get it completely made to measure. You can get it in all the sizes available comes standard with the Ultraflex boots, three color options, and pick a size of boot that you want. Uh, it is, uh, like I said, when you look at this suit versus our premium suits, you'll notice the zipper goes a different direction. Uh, that is because the YKK zipper is absolutely awesome in a perfect straight line. So to make sure that small, with smaller women, it doesn't interfere with uh, the exhaust valve, we change the direction of the zipper. Next slide, B. Okay. Well, that also on the suit, uh, I mean, these suits start at $1,750. So it's a good entry level price on the suit. And it is a, is a tri lamb. So if you're, you're waffling back and forth on how much do I want to do, what do I want to do, this is a good way to start. By the way, our premium suits only come with the brass zipper. You don't have an option. And brass zippers will last the full life of the suit. And then we have the Cortez. The Cortez is the flagship of our uh, premium, uh, I'm sorry, not premium, our standard line, which is our opening price point line. 
This is a heavy duty ripstop uh, trilaminate. Uh, it's fast drying, lightweight, but incredibly, incredibly durable fabric. Um, you see it right here with the green stitching. That's how it comes out of the box. Two, two pockets left and right, zip seals. The one thing about this suit, you have the only option you really have with this suit is if you want black stitching or green stitching, that's it. Um, again, it's price point driven. You have your three year warranty. You actually do have uh, this suit available. I know it says at the bottom 11 sizes for men, six sizes for women. We've extended that to the 18 sizes for women, 15 sizes for men and fully made to measure as well. Telescoping torso, warm neck collar, you know, you name it, all the bells and whistles that you can get. This suit is around, uh, starts around uh, uh, around $2,000, um, but if you get it custom, then you're up to $2,400. So, and remember, because it's zip seals, you can put dry gloves on any of these suits. Absolutely. Our no, this is by far our most inexpensive suit. It retails around uh, $1,500. This, this suit is a no, a no frills suit. It's very clean, very simple. It does only come in the five main sizes. It's only cut for men, for men but it does come with zip seals. It does come with a two year warranty. Uh, it does have neoprene socks, but you do have to buy an addition, uh, a, a boot to go over the sock. It does not come with the suit, but it is a very low cost, easy to and uh, easy to get into suit uh, for somebody who you know just is looking to try it out. I know some dive shops they don't rent suits; you have to buy them. Um, this might be a way to get somebody into a suit that's really easy for them. Uh, we also put use this suit. I've sold this suit a couple times to people who spend a lot of time cleaning pools um, because it is inexpensive and the chlorine tears through suits. Uh, so they would rather just have a suit that will last a couple years before they have to replace it. And this is a breathable Kodura. It's actually designed for warmer water. You're not going to wear this on an ice dive. It's a bi lamb, not a tri lamb. So the suit where it really shines is if you're diving, doing longer, deeper dives, or just longer dives, even if it's warm water, even if it's in the 80s, you're in the water for a few hours. You'll be more comfortable in this compared to a wetsuit. Of course, if you're in there for a few hours, you have to go back to the slide for mature audiences and decide on another option. So, but now we're into public safety suits and we work, Scuba Shack does a great job with us. We're working with a lot of teams. I work with a lot of different teams, getting them into the appropriate suit. This, this type of diving is not for sport diving. I put this in for those folks that are from public safety here. It's available, it's a men's cut suit. Okay, and, and it's, it's just basically, that's just the way it is. We don't, we sell a lot. It's called the CXO. It's entirely a polyurethane. This suit is what you want to wear if you're going into a true oil slick at this point. They can decontaminate the suit relatively easily compared to some of the other fabrics that are out there. It's got, we'll talk about permeation in a few minutes because you have to protect the diver. The suit is only sold with dry gloves and an attached latex hood and neck seal combination, and it's only back entry. And the valves, they're, they're yellow. That's not because we're trying to make the suit look pretty. They're yellow because there's actually an extra diaphragm in there so that the valve will last water when last longer when it's exposed to contaminated waters. This is all about mitigation, protecting the divers as they're getting into the water. These suits, work really well, but they are not the best swimming suit because of the type of fabric it is. The most popular selling suit for men and women would be the public safety suit, would be the TLS public safety. It's basically what we have with the 350. The flap that covers, and that's actually part of the overlay, that covers the brass zipper to protect it, to keep it from getting dirty. We don't have it on there because that extra flap actually will hold the contaminants and it's more it's difficult to clean difficult to clean the zipper and you can add pockets onto a suit like this you could do any type of boot that you want with this so it works for 90 percent of the teams out there and and that's what they prefer but here's the big chart to look at this is all about permeability no you're not going to be swimming through a vat of sulfuric acid but it could be floating on the surface 
you have all these other chemicals. You can see the time you have before it actually will start working its way through the suit. So, and that's the other reason why public safety divers, no matter what, when they work with NFPA standards, they want to make sure their hands are in dry gloves because when you're in a harbor, you're in a dirty area, you're in a sump, and you're putting your hands down into the bottom, that's where all the heavy metals are. That's where all the contaminants are sitting. They're either all the way on the surface or most of the time all the way in the bottom. There's some in between, but the heaviest type of contaminants are surface and on the bottom. You've seen it, oil slick floating on the surface, and you smelt the mud when it gets all, all mixed up. And this is basically, once again, in order to protect the diver. This is your tour. Yeah, this is a this is an H. This is what we call our dual operation suit. It's our H two O. This is the only suit I know on the market that you buy and you can buy in three different configurations. You can buy it in dive mode. You can buy it in surface mode, which is what you show here. We show here that's pictured, or you can buy it in uh, dual mode, which then you tell us how you want us to set up the suit, and we set it up that way. You also get, let's say you set it up for dive, you will also get the blanking plugs, two of them, one for the inlet and one for the exhaust, and these splash seals that you see. They're also zip seals, so you can dive with dry gloves, you can take them out, you can put in regular zip seals, and you can go diving. This suit comes with uh, reinforced knees, so that's got our extra long aramid fiber knee pads with a CF200 knee pad underneath it, 17 and a half inches long. So it comes standard with a relief zipper, knee pads, butt pad, reflective tape, elbow pads. All of this is included in the suit. You just have to tell us whether or not you want it for diving, for surface mode, or for, um, for both. These suits come standard with uh, Cordura socks. We've gone away from the latex socks. Uh, so it comes standard with a taped Cordura sock. Uh, and so you use that with a rock boot or another type of over boot and you'll be, you'll be able to be in the suit for quite some time. This suit is designed for extended wear. Um, so you have all the options uh, that you want to install on the suit. Any DUI option can be installed on this suit. Mind you, it already has mo what most people want. It comes in three colors, the black and yellow that you see there, orange, uh, orange and black, or all black. You get to choose. Uh, one of the things that we also do with all public safety is if the teams want their unit patches on the suits, for no additional charge, we put their unit patches on. Um, it'll go underneath the DUI logo or on the chest, wherever you guys want it. You just tell us what you want us to do. Um, so you have lots of the uh, freedom with this suit. Uh, FDNY is actually one of the biggest customers for this suit. Uh, and they wear these suits for quite some, uh, quite a few hours when they have to be in them, uh, when they're on their boats and, and stuff at the surface, just waiting to respond. So it is designed for long-term uh, long term wear uh, and, uh, and comfort, so you don't overheat in these suits. And now you need insulation. Now, you, you really can't wear, you can't wear cotton. As soon as cotton gets wet, it's a great, it's not an insulator anymore. It's now going to be pushing the heat away from your body. The one thing that makes me crazy is when I'm watching people get dressed and they went out and they spent $4,000 on the dry suit. They spent $500 on their undergarment and they put a cotton t-shirt underneath and they come out and they're like, you know, I'm freezing my butt off. Well, you know, if you sweat before the dive, it's actually going to contribute to your chilling down, particularly if you're wearing cotton underneath but what dry suit insulation does it actually has a wicking factor it will moderate moisture i mean you can't be chopping wood while wearing this thing where you pass out anyway but it'll move the moisture away from your body through the material and to the outside edge of the suit now when you'll see a dry suit diver particularly on days where it's warm on the surface the water's cold and then they come back out and they open up their suit, and it looks like the suit leaked because there's all these droplets of water on their undergarment, on the inside of the suit. That's actually the perspiration that has moved away from their body through the undergarment, and once you have a 20 degree temperature differential, you get condensation. And it'll dry very, very quickly. 
Now, the other thing too, you got to be aware of, and you really need to follow the instructions because this type of material absorbs oil, even skin oil, very easily. So it does need to be taken care of. You do have to wash it, but don't throw it in the dryer because it will shrink. So you have to air dry it. And we have a couple of different options on here. The Thinsulate that we have in the XM 450 and 250, it, even if it's compressed, it will, st it will keep you warm even if it's wet, but it doesn't stretch this material. So we actually added panels into it to allow the material to stretch. Okay, so you'll, you've got the warmth factor here, the 450. You want 450 and a thin layer underneath it if you're diving in the Arctic, okay? 250 is the most common one that I sell in this immediate area. And then we go into the Polar Tech, as it says here, our most popular two way stretch, very comfortable on this. And the thing that's really important yes, we now make them in women's sizes. Even more important, you can get it in special production sizing. We will actually custom make this undergarment for you, but it's only available in a jumpsuit style. We also have undergarments where you have a jacket and a pant if you prefer to have a two-piece unit to wear yourself. So it, it does really make a difference when you're investing in the dry suit. You really should invest in dry suit insulation, dry suit undergarments. And don't forget, it also comes in a vest. Say again? The vest. The vest. And we do have a vest and we have socks. Socks vest. I see a lot of the guys out here wearing the vest at, uh, between dives at the shore or on the way in on the boat. They'll just be wearing the vest because it, it's nice, it's light, but still keeps you warm. All right. Well, at this point, here's our email. I didn't put Tor's phone number up because everybody calls them at three o'clock in the morning. Okay. Yeah, I love you guys on the East Coast for doing that to me. Yeah, well, we're always thinking of you. So you can contact either one of us at any time for any questions you may have. And like I said, you could also contact us. You could shoot us an email and, and we would be more than happy to send you out a PDF of the product. So I saw it's anything that you, you need in order to help you make a decision or, or get anything answered at this point. So, all right. And at this point, we're gonna open it up to questions. And, and now the easiest way to get this working, I believe they just have to push down on their space bar. Yeah, that's correct, Peter. I, I got a couple of questions that came through on the texts while you were presenting. So why don't we address those first and then uh, then we can open it up. How's that sound? That sounds great. All right, so I'll read you the first one, okay? And it says, any tips on preventing heel slip in rock boots? I'm in between sizes and unless if I really crank down on the laces, sometimes my heel is uh, fully in, uh, isn't fully in contact with the heel of the boot. The only thing I would recommend at that point, if you're between sizes, um, can you go into a possibly a thicker undergarment sock, uh, something to hold it more tight? Uh, that was actually the reason I went away from the rock boot into the uh, into the ultra flex boot because the same thing. I don't like you know I don't like my boot too tight because then I feel my feet get cold. But you might have to look into a thicker undergarment sock uh, or a couple layers of socks to really hold, you, hold your foot tight and snug in the boot. Or you could go the opposite way and go with a thinner sock and try a one size smaller boot. Unfortunately, the rock boots do not come in half sizes. Okay, uh, the next one, now you gotta, you gotta answer this one right because it's from one of my instructors. Okay. <laughs> so, I'm all bad against them. No, 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 it's a she actually. So, okay. <laughs> all right. It says, my husband's DOI suit, and he has a Yukon 2, I know. All right, has boots attached on his Yukon 2. Can you change the boots out? Absolutely. Okay. All you gotta do is uh, go online to diveDUI.com, fill out the repair form under uh, support, send it in with the suit. Uh, right now our turnaround time on boot swaps and repairs is about two and a half weeks, uh, two to two and a half weeks. There is a test and evaluation that gets done on every suit that comes in, uh, just because we wanna make sure that when it goes back out, it doesn't leak. So we can absolutely change the boots out for you. Now that, he, now that you have the suit, you can even change the different style boots if you want. 
depending on what you want, depends on what it's going to cost. Just bring it in to me if you, if Steve wants to change them out. That's not a problem. So we'll you help go. you out with that. All right. Uh, next question. Is there any warranty on damage during a dive? I would ask what kind of damage. I mean, if you're bumping up against rocks and getting torn up, no, there isn't a warranty. Um, if, you know, you overinflate your suit and you pop the seams, we're not going to know that that's what happened and we're not going to fight you for it. If the seam is, if the, if the, tears at the seam, we're gonna replace the seam. Uh, we're gonna fix the seam. One of the things with our test and evaluation though that we do is it covers our optics, minor, minor and, and uh, uh, so it might be so a way, it might be a way the money, get it in, get it in, check that, let us know. Um, um, it's it's too expensive, expensive, but normal wear and tear is not gonna be covered by warranty. Uh, if, you, uh, if you want something in or anything like that. Okay, great. All right, next question. Uh, undergarment type for the water temperature chart. Does something exist? It does. Um, I don't believe, I, I believe it was at one time online. Um, we can definitely provide that to you, Monty, and, and so you can provide it to the customer. We do have a temperature range for undergarment that we recommend. Okay, perfect. All right, next question. And this goes way back, it looks like. So I remember Dick Long talking about the decompression model created by DOI for different thermal stresses. Is that still available? No. No. <laughs> I'm trying to think. I'm like, nah, I don't know anything about that one. <laughs> All right, no problem there. <clears throat> next question is, what is the seam sealing procedure for the TLS suit? If it is not heated sealed tape, uh, if it is not a heated sealed tape. We use a pot, basically the suit is stitched together and then we use layers of uh, glue, aqua seal, and that's how we seal the suit up. And if you take a look on the inside, you'll see the workmanship there. Some of these people are really artists on this. They get the seams nice and straight. It's not all bunched up. We also, when you get the suit out of the box, it doesn't have an odor for it. We use good quality materials to work it there. And the big thing to remember, no suit leaves the factory without going through the water test. Every suit is immersed, build up, build up there, and we check for, check for any kind of leak, seams, anywhere. All right, perfect. Next question. Will you be offering the silicone wrist zip seals with the abrasion protection? At this time, there's no plan to do that. Okay. All right. Next question. Can we, can we resource the waterproof fabrics from your company for our own sewing projects? That's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> so the answer to that is maybe. <laughs> Before we allow you to do that, um, there's gonna, we're gonna go through a lot of questions on what you're doing with them. If you're building a dry suit, I'm gonna tell you flat out no. Um, but has it been done in the past? Yes, yes. But it's, it's gets evaluated on a case basis. All right, perfect. Next question Any guidance on preventing roll up along the neck seal? Currently using silicone, cut to 10, seal is so long, is what it says. Well, basically, when you put the seal on, stretch it down. Actually, pull the seal flat on your neck so it's just underneath your neck, and you'll have the excess material will actually work its way down onto your collarbone. Just push it down. You need to have at least one inch of a seal in order to make that work. If you just pull the suit on and the seal's sitting there, your neck has gotten wider and now rolls down. You need to pull the seal down to get it nice and flat. It takes a little extra time, but you'll be a whole lot drier, and that will eliminate that roll down effect. All right, excellent. All right, so that was all I had from the text boxes. Uh, Peter, I'm gonna ask you if you don't mind turning, uh, turning. oh, wait a minute, there's another one. What do you got? Oh, Hang on one second. You're gonna have to tell me how to give it back to you, by the way. All right, so what you're gonna do is find my name, and then you'll see the a couple of dots next to it uh, yep. on the make, list. Okay. And then it'll say, yeah, make host is all you're going to say. now the host. Yeah, okay, great. All right, Mike, now you're in charge. All right, got a couple more questions just came in, so I'll go ahead and read them off to you. 
Are there any plans to make tiki blue chucks or other fabrics to match the dry suit? No. <laughs> <laughs> if you really like the tiki blue, tiki blue, I can put it on your knees and I can put it on your butt. Okay. All right. Uh, okay, next question. Is there an opening on the wrist of the suit for a dive computer and compass? An opening? No. No. Okay. I didn't, yeah. Okay, so next question. I have developed a neoprene allergy. Which of your suits have no neoprene? All of them. They all have neoprene. Now, just so you know, I'm actually just dealing with a customer on this today. We will make a TLS 350 with no neoprene on it at all, which basically means we don't use the neoprene sock, we'll use a Cordura sock, and we take off the warm neck collar. And it looks a little unfinished, but those are the only two items on that suit that are neoprene, and that's the only thing we can redo. And then the suit, there's no neoprene on it. It doesn't look quite adequate, but it can be done. All right, great. Next team, next question. Public safety dive team will be needing replacement dry gloves, neck seals, and other items soon. Is there a catalog only? Uh, is there a catalog or only on the website? And what is the website? Okay, well, the website's very simple. DiveDUI.com. Email us, one of the two of us. Send it to Tor. He's got nothing to do. And <laughs> we, will, we will email you a PDF file so that you can see the seals in there. And then go to your local dealer who should be supporting your dive team and set yourselves up with what you need. Because those seals will need, to, if you're doing neck seals, they'll need to be cut. Dry gloves, there's nothing really to do there except putting them on the suit. Yeah. Although I can't stress uh, any harder that, especially for the PS teams, you really, you, you got to go to your brick and mortar shop for it, whether it be us or any, any of the other dealers that are, are present tonight. Um, it, 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 just the fitment's so important, you know, uh, especially when you end up sharing suits between people, we got to make sure everything's properly set on the suits for you. You know, that, so again, I just can't stress that, that, that hard enough to, to get in. And, and if you're not involved currently with a, with a local dive shop in your area and your public safety team, you really need to be. Um, so I can't say that any, you know, I can't be any much more clear on that one believe me i mean i service a bunch of teams including connecticut state police and i'll tell you having been a public safety diver and commercial diver for a lot of years you know, one of one of one of a few things is going to happen with the suit they're either going to lose it eat it or break it okay so we're going to want to make sure that you have somebody you can go to locally that can that can handle your issues all right next question public safety divers get very wet using zip seals any tips well, if the uh, zip seal's on the wrists, you should really be in dry gloves. That's, that's the NFPS standard. But if you're going to insist on doing it, and that's your own choice, okay, that's fine. Here's the problem. This tendon right here on the bottom, when you move it, it tends to open up a little channel, and that's where the water is going to travel through. You have to make sure that the seal is pulled down. A lot of people have a seal end right at the end of their wrist. You actually have to pull the seal down so it's past the bone on the wrist. That tends to mitigate but not completely eliminate. It really comes down to how you're built at that point in order to keep the seal from working through. And if you wear a wetsuit glove over it, something that's got a nice firm cuff on top, that'll also slow, slow the water flow down. Constant pumping Constant motion, pumping motion with your hands, no water. When you're, no you're water. picking up tools, you're grabbing things, grabbing it's going to cause your that tendon to basically a little channel, and that's how the water's going to go through. Okay? If you're having problems on the neck, as I stated before, is making sure that you pull the seal down, you have at least an inch flat all the way around. A little lower is better than higher up, and your hood will lock in if you're wearing an attached latex hood. That's not an issue, but you'll cut down on weak issue the next seal by having it lower on the neck, nice and flat. Now, if I might make a recommendation to the group, uh, and this is something I've had very a uh, great deal of success with with my teams, is that, for example, you might have a, a team that, say, shares five or six suits. And what we've done in the past is that we've actually gotten seals for each diver. So they, a lot of times, I think, too, Peter, is that the seal potentially might have been cut for somebody else and it doesn't quite fit right either. 
So that could be uh, another issue as well, besides, uh, you know, the great ideas that you gave. Well, so what we do a lot of times, if we have a team that's, uh, that's sharing suits, is that, of course, we'll get the suits made for them, and then we'll issue each uh, member their own seals, which they can snap onto the suit when they use it. Okay. So uh, another recommend here is uh, recommendations for gators. Do you recommend gators? Go ahead, Tor. No, no, because I don't use them. <laughs> I, I won't lie, I don't use them. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I, when I first started diving, I saw people in dry suits using them. I never had an issue where I felt that I didn't have control of the air in my legs and that I didn't, I needed gators, but everybody's different. So it really comes down to your comfort level and your skill set when it comes to diving. Um, you know, it just, if you want to use them, great. If you don't, great. Well, the, the problem you may have with gate, but not that you have a problem with gators. If you have a suit that happens to be overly large yeah, sure, around yeah, your calf and ankle area, there's excess material there, you'll have a lot of air we'll going down, down into the, down into the boot and you haven't got the wrist, you haven't got the wrap, like we have around. And like strike presentation there. You so then gators will work, but you do have to wait. You don't put them on so tight that no so air down to you. Let's go around. Otherwise, you can get very cold. Sure, the middle ice hold far left. There you go. Okay, uh, that's what we had. Uh, you know, that's what we've had for uh, for questions to the text. Uh, I'm going to recommend to everybody online that if you have any direct questions you'd like to ask Peter or Tor, uh, you can go ahead and either click and unmute yourself and ask your question, or hit your space bar, and that should allow you to go ahead and talk. So I'll give everybody a minute or two to do that. So please go ahead. Well, I see this one question here. For a public safety, non-weight integrated. Okay, great question. Not everybody likes to go with weight integration. We do have, you have to put weight somewhere. So we do have the weight and trim. This is the new weight and trim three. Now, you're, most people are familiar with the original weight and trim. For lack of a better word, it used a nylon cord, weed whacker cord, for lack of a better term. And when you ditch the weight, you lost the pocket because there was no way of holding on to it. With the new system, now you just pull this out and the pocket is attached to the line. And the big advantage on something like this is you can actually take your pockets out and hand them up to somebody on the boat or clip off and hand them up to somebody on the boat. And when you put them back together, now I can guarantee I'm gonna screw this up because I always do when I'm on camera. It's basically aligning the two sections together, and it's a cotter pin that slides in. And like I said, I always mess this up. And that locks it in place. So it's easy on, easy off. Works really well for the 90% diver because he can keep or she can keep the weights off. Somebody can walk over, put the weights on, just slide the cotter pin in, and off they go. They don't have to be wearing their weights on, on the whole time. So some, some teams I'm working with actually do a dual weight system. They may be wearing one of those systems and then a separate weight belt. The, the whole idea is you had a problem. You'd only be ditching part of your weight, not all of your weight. You're in shallow water. You're working in a current. You ditch a 40-pound weight belt. You're on your way to the surface. And if there's a boat in the way, you'll make a nice dent and they'll all know where you are. So ditching partial weight, you'll still get up to the surface and be able to float. I hope that answered your question. It's all about training. Absolutely. Couldn't agree with you more on that one, Peter. All right. Does anybody have any questions that they, any other questions that they'd uh, like to ask Peter Tor? So just, I just saw a question pop up about Kubi ring, uh, Kubi dry glove system. DUI does not install the Kubi ring system onto our suits. Um, we have no plans of doing that right now have other dive shops installed those ring systems onto our suits yes do we do it no uh that's the best thing i can give you information i would look around and see which local dive shop you have in your area that does do dry suit repair that can do that for you all right other, other questions that we can answer for you all right Pete, Torres, is there anything else that you guys want to talk about before I, uh, I just do a quick uh, summary 
we, we, we do have something for these folks. If you're deciding that you would like to buy one of our premium dry suits, you can. DUI, we have a spring special. We will actually throw in the weight and trim system in three different sizes and two different size weight pockets, either 10 pounds in each or 20 pounds in each to work with. The 20 pounders, by the way, actually have a divider that keeps the weights from sliding back and forth. So if you only put five pounds in here, it's not gonna travel all over. If you don't wanna go that way, you're buying a new dry suit and you want a new pair of fins, we will throw in the OMS Reef Stream fin, which is available in this wonderful gray color, which I'm sure Tor will love. And then these come in small, medium, and large, extra large, three sizes. And of course we have pink, but they're only available in small and medium. And Are you trying to say I'm color shy? Say again? Are you trying to say I'm color shy? Well, you are. All right, bring it. I'll, I'll wear the pink fins next time when you're out here. Okay, that'll work. I want pictures of that. Yeah. <laughs> I want to see that. <laughs> All right. So, any other questions? Chat box? Anybody see anything new up there? So, I'm having my producer take a look right now. See if he sees anything new. Oh, might be another one coming up here. Flex Extreme bought in February, but only got two weeks ago due to COVID. Um, what, what, Cody, what's the question there? I mean, does, if it doesn't fit right, you just got it two weeks ago. We know with the, with the. He's talking with, about the specials. We'll work with you, whatever you need. Um, really trying to let me know what you want to do with the suit, and we'll go from there. From there. Okay. All right. Go ahead and share that. All right. So I'm going to just, uh, uh, at this point, close out. We're getting a little bit past the hour time. So, uh, hang, hang on a uh, minute. Uh, there's a good question here. Has the COVID right. quarantine affected sales? It's affected everybody, but just so you know, from the first quote unquote slowdown or shutdown, Tor and I and the rest of the sales team were available seven days a week. We still are. We were, we're working remotely. We're both at home at this time. So we're able to service our dealers. We're able to put suit orders in. We are back in production and have been for the last 10 days. So everything's up and flying. If you put a suit order in today, it would be completed by July 15th. We have that many orders. It's opened up. So yes, it's been, it's been busy for us. And we've been shipping continuously anything on the OMS and DUI that was basically off the shelf. That's awesome. That's great. I know I just got a suit in from you guys, so I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> One of my clients. So they were, they were very pleased about it. All right. So I'm just going to take a minute here and uh, just let you know that uh, uh, we actually, uh, even though I am a brick and mortar shop, uh, we actually do sell uh, uh, DUI suits uh, virtually. And uh, one of the things, so it's a little different than going out there to a shop and clicking some boxes and hoping to get what you want, you know, when it, when it, gets, uh, when it gets delivered to you. Uh, one of the things that we have going for us is that I've got over 20 years experience working with DUI. I've, even though Pete hasn't been with DUI for 20 years, I knew him long before that so we've been working together for a long time uh tor i just met but i'm looking forward to doing a lot more work with him as well so we know the suit we know the product line and uh basically we know the proper fitment on it and and we have again 20 plus years working with dui suits go ahead and click it and uh so i'm just going to go over to the next piece uh, one of the things that we do is and i've said this to my clients going forward especially in reaction to the COVID issues if you can't come in to see us or you want to talk to us, if I can't come to you or, you know, if, if you can't come to me, I want to be able to come to you. So we actually, uh, if you're interested in purchasing a dry suit, we actually will do a virtual consultation with you here. I don't care where in the United States you are, we can go ahead and do that. And reality is here, you know, we'll discuss what it is you're looking for. We'll discuss the options. We'll put a price package together. We always give you the best price on them uh, as going forth. I generally, believe it or not, even though I've been doing this a long time, I have Peter look at my quotes before I give them back to you to make sure everything's right because I want to make sure you have the best experience you possibly can. All right. Uh, 
after uh, we've gone ahead and, and actually put the suit together for you, you've ordered it, DUI actually at this point shipping them directly from the manufacturer right to you. So it doesn't have to come back to my shop. It can come directly to you. After you receive the suit, we will actually do a, an additional uh, virtual fitment confirmation with you where we'll allow you to go ahead and put the suit on. And, I, and again, uh, myself and, my, and, and uh, my partners have been doing this a long time. We can generally tell just by the look of how the suit is on you if it's fitting properly. But at that point, we can help you address any issues with it. If I have to get Pete on the phone or Tor on the phone, I certainly can do that and we can work out any issues with it. You are not gonna be going through this like, you know, you're clicking boxes and getting, uh, getting you know, hopefully you're getting the right sizes. I will also assist you if you want a custom suit in the measurement process. There are several videos out there on how to do it, but however, I will walk you through it. You will need a friend, uh, generally a pretty close friend, to do the measurements for you. Uh, but I'll make sure that they, you know, as long as I can see them while you're doing them, I can actually uh, go ahead and, um, and uh, confirm everything before it's sent over. And then again, I generally go over these measurements with the factory prior to the manufacturing, because if something's wrong, they can generally tell, okay? All right, so uh, one more, okay. So just, you know, I wanna thank everybody for coming tonight. Uh, again, uh, we actually host a Scuba Shack TV session. Uh, if we actually manage to get this recorded, it will be on our TV channel, which is out on YouTube. So if you go ahead to Scuba Shack uh, TV, uh, just go to YouTube and put in Scuba Shack TV, it comes up. Uh, we're on Twitter, Instagram, and uh, please, please, please go ahead and like us on Facebook. Uh, we have some great uh, stuff going on. My partner, Jeff, has got some great videos out there. I am not the video guy, believe me. I had a hard enough time turning this camera on tonight. So, uh, but uh, he's got some great videos out there. We have some how-to uh, guides out there on nitrox and, and tank servicing and that type of thing. So you can actually watch and see what's done uh, to the equipment. So it's kind of a fun thing to watch. Uh, go ahead, the last one. And as promised... Uh, for those of you that are public safety team members and need a certificate saying you attended training this evening, if you uh, send me an email to info at scubashackct.com, uh, and I'll have Mike put that in the chat box for me, uh, we'll go ahead and put that in the chat box for you as well. Uh, what I'll do is uh, we'll go ahead and, and create a list over the next day or so, uh, and then uh, Pete, Pete actually will send you a confirmation of training certificate. Additionally, Scuba Shack, uh, besides the great offerings that DUI is uh, offering with the, either the fins or the weight pockets, we are offering uh, additional uh, specials for DUI suit orders between now and June 15th. Uh, what I would like, if you're interested in seeing what our offers are, uh, please go ahead and just send me a query to info at scubashackct.com and I will send you the flyer that we have uh, put together for that. So uh, that being said, go ahead and unshare the screen. Um, is it stop? Yeah, right there. Okay, good. All right. So that being said, I've just, uh, we're sitting here right about, uh, what is it, about uh, 20 after? Yeah, 20 after 8. So I'm just going to open up for any last questions that everybody may have while I got uh, Pete and Tor here. Anybody? Bueller? <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Well, great. Uh, you have my contact information. And if, if you didn't get Pete or Tours, and if you want to ask a question about a DUI suit, I can certainly send it on to them. It's not a problem. If I can't answer it, I generally make up an answer. Only kidding. <laughs> but uh, if I can't answer it, I'll go ahead and send it right on uh, to Pete and Tor, and they'll get right back to you. So I'd like to thank everybody for spending an hour or so with us this evening. Uh, we'll see what we can come up with next uh, for our next seminar. So keep an eye on the message boards and you'll see them, them come out as they go. So guys, have a good evening and thank you very much. Thank you. Take care, thank everybody. You. Thank you. Bye -bye. Good night. Good night. Tor, I'll talk to you tomorrow. You thank you. Have a great night. Okay. Have a great night, everybody. Take care. You all too. Thank you.